Airspace in the United States is broken up into six classes, A, B, C, D, E, and G, based on traffic congestion. Each class carries restrictions like what's needed to enter the airspace and what minimum weather conditions must be maintained for VFR flight. Class A airspace overlies the entire country and starts at 18,000 feet MSL. Only IFR flights are allowed in Class A airspace, so as private pilots without our instrument ratings, we won't even be going up above 18,000 feet. It's not depicted on any chart because it's simply everywhere, overlying the nation's airspace at that altitude. Class B, or Bravo, is very congested airspace around the busiest airports in the country. It resembles an upside-down wedding cake with three or more tiers because aircraft arriving and departing from the busy airports are flying lower the closer they are to the airport. So the restrictions carried by Class Bravo will extend to lower altitudes the closer we fly to the main airport. All flights must get a clearance from air traffic control to operate in Class Bravo. The minimum visibility required is three statute miles, and aircraft must remain clear of any clouds. Class B airspace is depicted by heavy blue lines around the largest airports. Here's DFW Airport in Texas. The innermost area around the airport starts at the surface and goes up. The Class B immediately around DFW goes from the surface to 11,000 feet MSL as indicated by the symbol here. Outer areas of the Class B start above the surface but typically go up to the same height as the inner area. This shelf around DFW starts at 2,000 feet and goes up to 11,000 feet. The bottom of the Class B airspace above a certain airport can be found by reading the symbol for the particular shelf it lies in. So here Lakeview Airport lies below Bravo airspace which starts at 3,000 feet directly above it. Class C airspace lies over and around smaller regional airports and has an inner ring starting at the surface and an outer ring starting higher up. It looks like an upside down wedding cake too, just like Bravo, but with only two tiers. So maybe it isn't a real wedding cake or is at least a cheap wedding cake, right? C for cheap. The entry requirements are to establish two-way radio contact with, air, with approach control, though no clearance is needed. Notice though that the cloud clearance requirements are stricter, since air traffic control is not necessarily separating all aircraft within Class C. So Toledo Airport here is a smaller regional airport. The two solid magenta circles indicate the Class C airspace. In the inner one, the airspace starts at the surface and goes up to 4,700 feet MSL. The outer ring has the Bravo start at 2,000 MSL, or about 1,200 above the ground, and go up to the same 4,700 MSL. Within 20 miles, pilots should contact approach if entering the airspace. The frequencies to contact are listed on the sectional. This is sometimes called the procedural area, and it's not depicted on the chart, but there's a 20 mile ring that's invisible on the chart that is the procedural area. Class D airspace is around the smallest towered airports and only goes up to 2,500 AGL. There's only one tier here, so if this is a cake, it's a pretty sad one compared to the other two. If you're eating it, you're probably alone, so letter D, we'll call it a divorce cake. D for divorce, right? There's only enough cake for one. Same entry requirements and weather minimums as Class C. The blue segmented circle around Majors Airport here shows Class D airspace. The 30 symbol in brackets means that the airspace goes up to 3,000 MSL, which is about 2,500 feet above the ground. When you're operating between airports, you won't be in B, C, or D airspace mostly, so you're typically covered by Class E airspace, E for en route. This is controlled airspace below 18,000 feet. Uncontrolled airspace is Class G. What does this mean, controlled versus uncontrolled airspace? What's the difference? Notice the entry requirements. Class E requires radio contact only if you're operating IFR, but VFR, neither E nor G, requires any radio contact. So for us VFR pilots, the only difference between the two airspaces is weather minimums. Most of the airspace during flight will be Class E for en route, while Class G will typically be close to the ground and around uncontrolled airports, Class G for ground. The altitude where Class G ends and Class E begins is indicated on the charts. Here we see Class E going down to 1,700 MSL, with Class G below that. Over here, inside the shaded magenta circle, Class E goes down to 700 feet AGL with G below it, while outside the shading, it's E down to 1200 and G below that. 
This is the more common way that you'll see echo on charts. Makes sense, right? The controlled airspace is lower to the ground near airports than it is away from airports. Some airports without a control tower will have class E extend all the way to the surface. There is no G airspace above it at all. This is to protect aircraft on instrument approaches all the way down to the runway, so it's depicted by a magenta segmented circle. What this means is that class G airspace starts at the ground and its top is defined by the bottom of whatever airspace is above it. Sometimes it's 1200 feet, 700 feet, other altitudes, or sometimes there's no class G at all. You won't see class G going above 14,500 MSL, and even those areas are getting rarer. The last places in this day and age where class G goes up that high can only be found in Alaska now, so dress warm. Let's look at that Lakeview Airport again near Dallas. It's an uncontrolled airport. It's class G airspace from the ground up to 700 feet AGL. Once the aircraft climbs above 700 AGL, it's in class E airspace. If it climbs further, it'll hit the base of DFW's class Bravo airspace at 3000 MSL and will need an ATC clearance to enter. Military training routes are published below 10,000 MSL to warn pilots about where aircraft can be operating at speeds in excess of 250 knots, either IFR or VFR. There's other airspace besides the A through G classification called special use airspace. Starting with the prohibited airspace, it's marked with a P and as its name suggests, can't be entered by civil aircraft. Here's a prohibited airspace around Camp David in Maryland. A restricted area is marked with an R and denotes the existence of unusual hazards such as military firing or missiles. Authorization from air traffic control is required to enter a restricted area. A military operations area, or MOA, contains military training activities. Entry into an MOA is allowed, but pilots should exercise extreme caution. Down here is a wildlife refuge. Pilots flying above a wildlife refuge are requested to stay at least 2,000 feet above the ground. Notice it says requested, not required. These areas are designated for wildlife where the authorities are trying to keep disturbances to a minimum, but it's only a request for aircraft to stay above 2,000 feet. I guess the birds don't have as good a lawyer as the military, so it's not a requirement for pilots, just a request. And finally, a warning area is similar to a restricted area, but extends from three miles out from the coast of the US. Once again, authorization is needed.